You know, you could see there was blood coming out of her eyes, uh, blood coming out of her wherever. Does she have a good body? No. Does she have a fat ass? Absolutely. You like girls that are five foot one, they come up to you nowhere. If Ivanka weren't my daughter, perhaps I'd be dating her. I view a person who is flat chested is very hard to be a ten. And you can tell them to go themselves. Does Donald Trump really speak for you? All right, for more on this, we're joined now by Sean Cox, who is the Director of International Academic Affairs at Istanbul's Bahçeşehir University. Uh, Sean, good to have you on set. Uh, you just saw the ad. Uh, with language like that, how is Donald Trump going to appeal to women? It's very difficult for him to make an appeal to women, obviously, with snippets of his uh, public life being available as this is. He has a mixed bag um, in terms of relationship with women in his professional life, but in his public life, he has a very misogynistic persona that uh, is, is quite obvious to most voters. He's now the presumptive Republican candidate. He's done a couple more interviews lately. Uh, you've had to listen to them. Uh, what do we know about him as the presidential candidate that we didn't know before? Um, what we're seeing now is that he's trying to make the move from a demagogue to a presidential uh, person, an individual who can competently execute U.S. policy, whether it's domestic or foreign. You know, he stated that in several weeks he'll be releasing a policy package that we're going to get to the nuts and bolts of his, uh, what his presidency would look like. But that being said, he just came out with comments about uh, that he would actually try to restore ties with North Korea. That then goes completely against U.S. policy right now. Yes, it does. It's, uh, it's to show that he's an um, anti-establishment candidate, that he's going to do what he thinks is best for America and what the people that have voted for him want him to do, to change things up in Washington, how business is done. And by doing so, he will, to quote him, make America great again. Well, he's definitely making the race very exciting, at least for journalists. But uh, let's look at the Democrats. Um, uh, a slim margin of victory for Hillary in Kentucky, a larger margin of victory for Bernie Sanders in Oregon. Bernie Sanders walks away with more delegates from the night, but Hillary is still uh, the, the leader and she's looking to lock up. Yes, she has um, the current uh, delegate lead and she also has the popular vote as well. More people have voted for her. Um, this debate revolves around the role of independent voters in the Democratic Party, a group that Sanders obviously appeals to in a much greater number than, than Clinton does. Do you think that Bernie Sanders, he's not going to be able to win, the chances are, are, are showing that, but the fact that he's st still in the race, is it hurting uh, Hillary Clinton's chances? Is it, is it damaging the image of the party in any way? Um, this is actually a big question that the Sanders campaign will have to address come June 7th. Uh, Clinton is predicted to win California as well as New Jersey and many of the other states that are uh, holding their primaries on that day. And Sanders has pledged to take the vote all the way to the, pr to the convention in July, um, he will not have the delegate count after June 7th, so he'll have to decide if he's going to continue with his pledge to bring it to, uh, to the convention in July. Okay, Sean Cox, thank you very much for that great analysis. Thank you.